appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nimesh and Rishi and Radhika and everyone at the Big Red Group. This is so exciting. Um, for those of you who just came in, I wanted to kind of really introduce myself again. I'm Dr. Solo Homoyun, and um, I'm hailing um, from Phoenix, Arizona at 6.30 a.m. to speak with you guys about a topic I really, really love. And I know you love it too, which is creativity. And uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I told you guys I, I was born and raised in Iran. I came to the US uh, when I was 18 to pursue higher education studies. And one of the reasons why I became interested in creativity is I saw um, in the times that I was working for um, a US company in, in financial services is um, specifically the idea that you know, how do we become better leaders? You know, how do we shape the future of leadership? And for me, it was about being kind. It was about being fun. It was about being um, just versatile, adaptable, and open to ideas. And I realized really quickly is that we really don't teach that as the main alpha personality. Um, right now it has more of a negative connotation. Um, and so I realized slowly is that in order to develop a leader that has really fun and creative you know, ideas and is open to other people's fun and creative ideas, you need to do both left side and right side brain training because you know, like the left side is all about the logic and the right side is more about the creative side. And so one of the things that we're trying to do today here is to get you an introduction um, to the right side brain training. Um, maybe you've heard of these topics before, maybe not. It's going to be a good reinforcement from some of you who's already been in this space before, which that will make me even happier. But for me, it was more about getting together and really understanding that in order to even help someone believe that they're creative, right, they really have to work on that for themselves. You can't just teach creativity without believing that you're creative, right? So today what we're going to do is just going to work on our belief systems, right? Prisha just another moment ago was talking about, you know, I believe she said that word, that phrase, um, you know, and I think this is what I want to end up um, making sure that when you guys start this process of creativity, you're going to first need to check in with yourselves and make sure that you believe that you're creative. And we're going to debunk some of the myths and misconceptions about creativity so that there is no reason for you not to believe that everyone is capable of being creative no matter where you're from what background you're coming from it's a human thing so that said uh like i said this is yes go ahead do you have a question your hand was raised Actually, Actually, I don't have a question. Sorry, Disha. Disha, I think like you have to screen on or, or something like that. Actually, I'm doing with my sister. I think you got to you got to put it on the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it's fine. It's fine. Dr. Sogul, it, 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 the floor is yours. You can share your sure, screen. And, yeah. And we can, yeah, Jisha, go ahead and put on the chat. We're, we're not going anywhere. I just wanted to say, let's make it as interactive as possible. <laughs> so I, um, I'm willing to stop throughout the presentation as we go along. This is not me talking for an hour and a half. That's exactly opposite. Remember, I think what I like to honestly tell you guys is there's a difference when you have your doctorate and you were born after 1984, because you can now say you're a millennial doctor, you know, kind of professor. And that just makes this whole image 10 times more fun. So I just had to say that. Go ahead, Jisha. <laughs> 
All right, just wanted to give a piece of knowledge. Yes, we are waiting to hear that piece of knowledge. Go ahead. So I, I read a lot of books. So in yes. one of my books, I actually learned that there's a difference between inspiring someone and being a leader. So as yes. you were talk, talking about a leader, and it was a book, its name was uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Yes. So in that, it said that to be a leader, you need to be really creative. Plus, you need to have belief in yourself because everything starts with a belief. So I'm used to reading a lot of books. So actually, I've done a course on Mind Valley. It's about your brain. So in that, I also learned that your left brain, as you say, as you said, uh, it is for if you uh, put your eyes up in the left side of your brain, you can, it is for remembering something which is, which you want to remember at the moment. And if you uh, uh, take your eye, eyeballs to uh, the right side of your brain and see that it helps you imagine better. That's how brain is. I actually really love reading about brain, seeing about brain. I mean, oh man, then Jisha, you're in the time of your life for this presentation. It's all about the brain. <laughs> it's actually the only problem is that I joined this link from my sister. I actually didn't uh, apply. apply. That's, That's fine. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. fine. Jisha, we want, of course, we, we want more and more people to join in because we want people like Dr. Sogo to come in and, and you know, impart her wisdom to all of you kids. So really excited, Dr. Sogo. Uh, and thanks, Jisha, for sharing uh, the piece of knowledge. Um, and hopefully, guys, everyone, please continue to raise your hands um, and, and we'll, we'll come to all of you. Um, Absolutely. One logistical thing, guys, um, all of you, this presentation can also be accessed through AHA Slides dot com backslash big red so if you type that or if you just want to scan the qr code which is here through your phone we have a couple of questions on the poll and you can answer um through that when, when the polling question comes so just a logistical statement from my side dr so all, all yours yeah absolutely no that's great so please go ahead and set yourself up and once i get to the poll we'll uh will tell you what it's all about. Um, all right, so uh, we are going to get started here. I'm gonna move on in. So, Jisha, didn't I tell you is all about the brain today? So, the presentation that we wanna talk about is connecting the dots, your brain and creativity. Do you like this? I love this picture on the right. Um, so again, guys, feel free to share some chats, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Um, you know, it's, you know, I wasn't able to specifically wear a Halloween costume, but we do have a wonderful uh, guest in this presentation that's going to guide us through all the stuff that we're going to learn today. So get ready. All right, so I have to start with the main man, right? I can't do that. I'm talking to India tonight. Um, your beliefs, right, become your thoughts and your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values and your values become your destiny. Right. This is so critical about the connection between beliefs and destiny and just in value development. Right. This is uh, our ability to be able to connect with everyone and be able to really understand, like, what value system do I live off by? Right. And then how do I revisit that, especially as you guys are going to be adults um, and, you know, really soon, it's really good to think about what you've learned from society, what you've learned from friends and family. And now what is it that's really applicable to your life, right? We have to constantly revisit because a lot of our values are actually shaped by the time we're four years old 
and it's really not a good idea not to revisit it <laughs> again because the way that we perceive the world at four years old it's very different at 18. Um, so that's why I'm encouraging you guys to think about your value system, but it obviously starts with your beliefs. So today, as promised, I am going to debunk some of the concepts about creativity that you may have heard. The first one being creativity is only about art. Number two, creativity is not the most important skill in organizations. And number three, you can't become creative. And finally, we are going to wrap this up with some cool quarantine creative activities, as I want to call it that, say that three times. So ultimately, to get the party started, we want to introduce Baby Yoda. This is my Halloween gift to you guys. He's going to impart some wisdom on us tonight. See, I was, I was thinking ahead, Nimesh. Come on, you're not giving me enough props. All right. So creativity is only about art. So in the chat box, what I want you guys to do um, real quick is tell me how are you defining creativity for yourself right now. I'm very curious, what have you learned about what creativity means? And we're gonna talk about this general definition that society has taught us and see what happens there. So in the chat box, type in, what is your definition of creativity as we know it? Uh, may I speak? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. so, my definition of creativity is like that it's the ability of like uh having to like do mistakes in something in order to like uh what do you say improve it better so like having the capability to do do mistakes and find something which is even better another thing that you, that you were actually doing it but, like improving on things better. by doing mistakes there you go that's one creative May I see? What yes. else? Go ahead. Uh, creativity for me is basically analyzing your mistake and bringing up constant newness to what you work. The same, you work the same thing, but with different methods, which will uh, basically make your work easy or give you something interesting, which would change many things for you, I guess. Go oh, different methods. What else? I'm looking at the chat box here too. It looks like some are saying being innovative. Creativity is something that sets you apart from the world, the uniqueness that you have, learning new things and kind of being more productive, ability to do something, imagine ideas and implement in your life, ability to develop and express yourselves, our ideas in new ways. Great. Being able to believe ideas, others think silly or impossible. Creative is about our own work, which we made from our brain, something unique, which shows how we think. Let's see what else. Creativity is how you think about something differently than others. Imagine ideas and implement in your life. Inventiveness. Wonderful. I define creativity as the ability to solve the same problem with a different approach and methodology. Very nice, creative. Capable to do mistakes in order to improve something. Creative is about our work, which we made from our brain, something unique, which shows how we think. Very nice. So what I'm gathering here is, you know, just a lot of problem solving, the ability to think in different methods outside the box. It's coming from our own brain, it's unique. Being able to do that, absolutely, this is great. Creativity is the art to express yourself in a better manner, absolutely. This is wonderful, guys. Okay, so in addition to all of your definitions, right, would you agree that a lot of just people, when they talk about being creative, they also associate it with the arts, like, oh, I'm good at drawing, I'm good at painting, you know, that's why I'm creative, or, you know, I have these tendencies to see people that specifically um, focus on 
uh, the ability to do something, you know, kind of artistic that way is like the only reason why they're creative, right? Or how about if it, they're extremely genius at something like a Bach or Beethoven or Einstein or Steve Jobs, right? These extreme examples that we have in society to say, wow, these are the creative people in our time, right? And we want to make this idea so grandiose that it's untainable, untouchable, right? To be able to do that, right? That's what society tells us too. This is the common knowledge that we all feel like we're getting from society, right? But today, what we're trying to understand, right, as not the society definition, but what is the reality? of creativity what is the reality that we're seeing in literature in academics also in practice what is the democratic definition of creativity what would allow creativity to be accessible and not so niche right this is very niche definitions of certain percentage of populations that may only have access to these types of things. We want to erase that today. That's not the goal here. So I'm going to propose a definition. And I want you guys to think about it. And it's about the idea that the production of novel and appropriate solutions to open-ended problems that have value so a lot of people say coming up with cool new ideas is creativity, but it's only half the story. Because at the end of the day, we function in society and society wants us to know, how is that useful to me, right? How is your new idea useful to me? So coming up with great ideas and problem solving is wonderful. And then being able to share the value proposition of that particular idea is going to be the finishing part of the formula here. And so I think that's why you guys see a lot of people starting up side gigs and different things because they think they've finally found something that the society would find useful to them, right? All the YouTubers out there right now, Instagrammers, all these people that are either producing knowledge or a product or service that they think that the society needs in order for them to be so-called creative. But what's happening here is that now this is accessible because now people all over the world, regardless of their talents, can be creative. And that's the kind of foundation I want you guys to think about as we move along, is how we define things, the story we tell each other is impacting our beliefs, whether we are aware of it or not. So if you feel like there's certain something that may be impacting the way you believe or think about the world, check your definitions. That's my point here, because that's probably what's affecting you, right? So think about it as we go along. So Baby Yoda is telling us myth number two is creativity is not the most important skill in organizations. This is really sad, but let's see if it's true. So right now, one of the biggest, biggest professors um, that's talking about creativity, it's talking about this thing called the creative economy. It's saying nowadays in the 21st century, we just can't learn knowledge. This is not the point. We have to develop our creative side. Why? Because humans, as opposed to AI, as opposed to robots, are the source of creativity. So let's not forget our role in society. We are the creators, not the created. <laughs> so just to solidify this point and so think about it guys the creative economy means that all the different topics that we're going to be learning in different disciplines that you guys are pursuing regardless of what whatever discipline it is but it's now trying to find the creative aspect of it again what was the definition a novel and appropriate solution that has value right that's what makes it creative 
So it doesn't matter that not every one of us is in a startup, but it specifically is talking about that in your field of study of interest, what are you doing to create additional problem solving plus value in it that's going to become creative for the rest of society? And this is gonna be catching on even more so than ever before because we need to still distinguish ourselves as humans to see what is our competitive advantage compared to other species. And until now, it's still creativity. So think about that. Now and this AI is- can be, yeah. Tanish, go ahead. Yeah, and AI can be really good at something which is knowledgeable. So for example, Google. Google will always be better than a human for finding answers. But the only thing that separates us is that a human can think of new methods to do something or new solutions basically being being created. So that's our only advantage if you really think about it, being created. It, it's gonna become really important. So let's do this poll. So 2015, there was a survey and it was saying, oh, what is the top skill that you need to have? Just five years ago, guys, this is ridiculously a short time. And everyone said complex problem solving. But now we're in 2020, and I want to know from the QR code that you just guys scanned, or if you're looking on the top to be able to log into Big Red through the AHA slides, what and where is creativity in 2020? Is it number one? Is it number two, three, four? What is it? So we're gonna take a moment for you guys to run the poll and see what you think creativity is on the list today. Uh, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, ma'am, actually I had a question. So yes, like you said that creativity is quite, uh, people are quite creative these times. So I had a question. So if there's a lot of competition among people for creativity, so how are we going to actually measure creativity and determine which person is much more creative than the other one? Because like I am interested in cars and if I get a project related to cars, I'll be able to perform better than a project related to football. So in that sense. Sure. But think about this question before you answer that question yourself, is why are you comparing yourself? Because what is happening here right now, and this is something taught by society, is that we have to compare ourselves to define success you know, what is the bottom line goal here that we're trying to accomplish? Because at the end of the day, if you really think about it, it's about the fulfillment of what we are trying to do in our own lives. Let that sink in for a moment, because unfortunately, this is the problem that we're dealing with right now, comparison. And it's not about that. It's really about understanding how we're gonna test our limits. And if we're looking at X, Y, Z, it's only to extend our own limits. So if you're a competitive person like I am, I get it. You're like, no, I've gotta be better because it's a competition against myself. That's the bottom line that we really have to think about. And I always tell my students, think about it. Place yourself, you're 70 years old, 80 years old, and you're looking back at your life right now, right? And you're asking, what did I do? What did I offer this world? What was I able to contribute, right? And did I live my life to the fullest? to the, all the capabilities, all the talents that I have been able to bring to this world to share with my friends and family and strangers. Was I able to do that? Or was I caught up in the rat race? Was I caught up in just because I need to have the bigger car, the bigger house, the bigger this? What was the goal here, right? 
that's going to be a point to think about. I know culturally, believe me, I grew up with that type of mindset where I need to have the power, the status, the prestige. I need to look this way. I need to look that way. I need to have all these superficial check marks that I need to complete in order to be quote unquote successful. But then I got tired. And then I realized I don't want to play the game anymore. I really don't. I just want to provide value the way and to the extent, the level I can, whatever talent level I have. But that's why I'm up on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. teaching you guys these topics because why else would I want to be waking up 6 a.m. in the morning, right? On a Saturday. This is deep, guys. I, I know this is deep. This is not something I expect you guys to change overnight. I know we live in a society where it says something else. And this crazy professor from the US, she's like, oh, it's easy for you to say these things. Yes, I get it. I get it. I know all the arguments. Believe me, I was in your shoes, all that stuff. But all I can say is do what I did. Test the theory. That's all I say, because if you guys are going to go into the creative process, I would only say test and experiment on yourself and see if anything changes inside of you. Because what really happened to me, just to kind of combine all the, you know, years, I specifically 18 years from 18 to now, which is 36 years old, combined together in two minutes that I want to share with you. The major, major difference that I feel is peace with myself. No one can take it away from me. No one can add to it. No one can subtract from it. Nothing. This is the type of peace I have because I'm okay with who I am. I'm okay with the extent of knowledge of level that I am sharing with you guys today. And it you know, if it looks better than some others, great. If it doesn't look better than some others, no problem either. But for me, it's really just about sharing my value in the best and most really fun way I can share. And that's going to be the mindset transition that I hope to really help people understand because a lot of us are kind of still stuck in the rat race and we're like wasting time. Whereas if you think about it, you know, speaking of our brain and our bodies and stuff like that, biologically, the most optimal energy level that a human body has is only between 20 to 40 years of age. And then after that, we naturally will break down, ladies and gentlemen, we'll naturally break down whether we want it or not. So the question is, what are we doing during this time frame, during this optimal amount of energy that we have? That's going to be the main question I asked myself because my mentor told me and asked me that question. Do you want to be stuck on, you know, Harry, Carrie, and Sarah? Or do you want to be stuck on actually developing and saying, look, I'm a rat race against myself. I have limited time. I don't know what I specifically want to do at the beginning, but I want to do everything that I love and I'm passionate about because that's the only thing that's going to be the main juice for my motivation. If anything is coming from external, it will be short-lived. It's pretty profound stuff. I was not supposed to go down this direction, so I'm going to reel it back <laughs> to the poll. Just a moment, because you asked, you asked a good question. I hope I hope I've I'm spinning some some wheels in your head, though. That was a nice TED, that was a nice TED talk. So What's funny is that just today, me and my mom were just discussing about my idea of success and stuff, and I just realized in the past fourteen years. I was so obsessed with productivity and being very optimal and just using every second, not wasting one second, that I sort of forgot to kind of just chill and just live 
and just think about what I really like rather than what other people want for me. And I don't know, many people have this when they're 28, maybe they have it when they're 60, maybe they have it on their deathbeds or something. But I am so glad I had it right now. And I, I like, I don't know, previously I sort of assumed that you have a final form, but right now I've, I've sort of come to the, um, I've sort of come to peace with the fact that there is no final form, form. you are going to be evolving and changing depending on everything around you, everything inside you. So just, just don't worry about the future, don't live in the past, just be in the present and just see where the flow takes you. So that was very profound. <laughs> Yeah, sure. that is. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's a very profound. I mean, I'm glad that you're able to decipher all of this at, at such a young age. But yeah, thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to share? Yeah, go ahead. Actually, the way the thing you said that even you are all about society think, will think that, they will think that. Even I used to be like that before the lockdown and I realized in the lockdown that what you need to do is not to compete with others. What you need to do is compete with yourself and always you need to see how I develop today or the next week or this week or next month, how you are developing yourself to be the better version of, version of yourself and the, be the best you can be in your life because the time period you have you think it's a really long but it's actually really short you never know what can happen and what because in lockdown many people who have had covid would have thought that there are a lot of time but there actually wasn't a lot of time there are so many of their dreams that they wanted to achieve but they actually didn't achieve and that feels so sad that anybody can cry on that because I actually do, I could actually cry right now, but I think crying isn't a good thing. You need to stay happy and make others happy. That's, that's also profound, Jisha, seriously. I would like to share one thing. Yes, go ahead. Uh, basically, I am a 12 study student. I am an IIT aspirant. So it's highly competitive stage right now, for, and at, at least for me. So I have learned one thing from my past one and a half uh, one and a half year experience that uh, rather than destroying rather than pulling down your competitors, you try and work on yourself and develop yourself to get better. Because if you pull down someone, it is destruction. But if you develop yourself, it is creation. It is always better. Yeah. Simply said, guys, every one of us is the solution to a future problem. Let that sink in. Every one of us is a solution to a future problem. And if you don't develop yourself, the society, the world is going to miss out on you. And do you really want that? Because you may not see it now. It's kind of like a seed underneath dirt. You don't see it, but with the bright water and sunshine and food, what happens, right? That's what nature teaches us. Some of the things are just not visible, but when they're worked on, then you blossom in different ways that you can possibly imagine. And for me, I told my friends and colleagues just today, yesterday, I said, I was a late bloomer. My flower was stubborn, did not want to come out, but I believed in myself because I really thought there's something there. There's absolutely something there for us to be able to move forward with all that stuff. So anyways, uh, my boss is telling me to move on. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the poll. So let's, uh, let's see what the results are. How do I look at the, the results? So, what, what do we... Doc Sobel, you've got to go to the next slide and that's when they will be able to answer the poll. Which yeah, is... I wasn't able to answer this one. 
You have to okay. go to the next slide and then they will... Uh, did everyone vote? No, they will only be able to vote once you go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, I'm moving. I'm moving. There you go. So start the poll. Guys are, yeah, perfect. So, uh, 10 is the highest rate right, in this scale. Uh, one will be, actually, you're right. It should be, <laughs> one uh -huh. actually would be the highest, guys. So sorry one, about that. Right. And 10 will be the least. Uh, yeah. One, three, eight, ten. All right. Oh, we got a four. Anybody else? We got 14, 17. All right. Last minute. All right. So let's drum roll, please, Nimesh. Let's see. Oh, what happened here? Everybody, I fooled you guys. I know, I know. I just, that's what I do. But hey, come on. It's close. That just means it's still in the top three. You all win. So, Yes, as you can see, the creativity skill is going all the way up, right? It's really going to be important for us how to figure out how to do and develop this critical thinking and creativity, right? Left side, right side brain training that we're doing here. So this was a really complicated graph from the U.S. Department of Labor that I thought it would be so fantastic to show in a more fun way. And basically, if you think about it, the blue-green line that you guys see on the top, right, is ultimately the jobs that use your mind. And then the, um, the, gre yeah, the green uh, line on the bottom, it says jobs that use your muscle, right? So what kind of conclusion are we getting out of this? Does someone want to tell me? Blue-collar jobs versus white-collar jobs. Absolutely. So that means this is not as important, unfortunately. It still exists, you know, with your, you know, jobs that use your muscle, manufacturing, labor jobs, all those, you know, different types of activities. But what's really gaining momentum is the jobs that use your mind. And especially when it comes to creative um, ideas and activities and stuff like that, we're all using our minds, right? That's what's happening. And especially um, around the world, um, I can only imagine that this is going to pick up tremendously in the next five years because of the Zoom life that we have to live in, right? That's basically expediting this whole process here. So it's a thing, guys, and governments are predicting it. And we now have to get on board because, you know, if, if, think of yourself five years from now, right? Where are you going to be? What are you going to do? How I'm giving you. The, not me, through the big red group, we're giving you the big competitive advantage to have the secret sauce now so that by the time five years come along, you're way ahead of others who are just waking up to this idea, right? Because we just gave you the secret, the secret's out. And now we just have to develop and develop and develop as fast as possible. And that's why you know, groups like the Big Red are so important in society. All right, so someone was talking about education systems, Mr. Tanish, and I was talking about it in this particular soul, right, that this is a problem and not only in US and in India, and this is the, the survey to prove it. Look at the bottom, 71%. Now, of course, this is US respondents, but what did they say? Creativity is stifled by the education system. So do you feel validated, Tanish? I feel like you do. So yeah. absolutely. This is, this is what I mean. 55% only half only think that they're creative. Why? Why only half? 
And 44% say only that they are living up to their creative potential. Why? Why are we so low? This is 2020. We have Instagram. What, why are we not living up to our creative potential? That's a problem. And I and think gentlemen. most of the people who are actually creative, they don't think themselves as creative. So most of the people are creative, but they just don't realize it. Yeah, that's true. I know one of my friends like that. Full circle, guys. We just came full circle, Tanish, with that comment yeah. about belief systems. Now you can see yeah. woo, right where we need to be, right? That's next on Yoda's list. All right. I'm going to use my awesome team here uh, to tell us a little bit about the brain and about learning. Because remember, creativity is a skill, right? But since I love to introduce different voices into my mode of teaching, I'm going to show you a couple of videos. And it, the first video is going to really talk about, maybe you've heard of it, growth versus fixed mindset, right? Why and how we learn is going to really impact us. But it's a really cool video. It's going to be awesome. And then the second video that we're also going to learn about is about the whole concept of how and why the brain can be rewired. So if someone says, I can't be creative, ooh, now you have a scientific argument on why they are full of it. And that is absolutely incorrect. So I'm going to uh, make sure we play it. And if there's like sound problems, just tell us on the chat. Um, so we feel good about the fact that you can hear it and stuff. If you operate in the world of sports or education, you've most likely heard of the term growth mindset. It's a concept that's sweeping the world and changing and improving the way that people learn. This powerful idea has been pushed forward by Stanford professor and best-selling author Carol Dweck. For decades, I've been studying why some people succeed while people who are equally talented do not. And over the years, I've discovered that people's mindsets play a crucial role in this process. These mindsets are really important when it comes to learning. Her work has uncovered two ways of thinking about skill and development. Some people have what's called a fixed mindset. They believe that skills and intelligence are set and you either have them or you don't. That some people are just naturally good at things while others are not. In short, they believe that you are not in control of your abilities. Other people have what's called a growth mindset, and they believe that skills and intelligence are grown and developed. So people who are good at something are good because they built that ability, and people who aren't are not good because they haven't done the work. In short, they believe that you are in control of your abilities. Really, the core idea here is people with a fixed mindset believe that skills are born. People with a growth mindset believe that skills are built. People with a fixed mindset believe that you can't or don't have to learn and grow. And people with a growth mindset do believe in their capacity to learn and grow. Dweck's work shows that mindsets have a major influence on people's ability to learn and that people who utilize this growth mindset tend to learn, grow, and achieve more over time than people with a fixed. mindset really creates a solid foundation for great learning and because of its power companies sports teams and schools from all over the world are implementing this into their culture Over 
worked with a ton of amazing groups to help instill this within their culture. We're talking Fortune 500 companies, lots of colleges, lots of high schools, and even a few prisons who are working to build growth mindset into their reentry program. What I'm trying to say is this is bigger than one study or one TED talk. This is a powerful concept that's helping lots of different people in lots of different places. Now, the reason it's so important and powerful is it is the foundation for learning. And if you understand this, no matter what you build on that foundation, it will be more powerful. But to really implement and run with this concept, we need to zoom in and look at the nuts and the bolts of it. We need to talk about what it actually is and how it actually works. Through years of work, Dweck and her team have uncovered sort of the defining characteristics of the two mindsets. This table really illustrates the contrast between the two. The first big characteristic we need to talk about is belief. Again, people with this fixed mindset believe that skills are born and therefore they can't or don't have to learn. People with a growth mindset believe that skills are built, therefore they can learn. The second major characteristic is focus. People in a fixed mindset tend to focus on performance and outcomes and results. In other words, their main focus, their main concern becomes how they look and more specifically to not look bad. People with a growth mindset tend to focus more on the process of getting better, of learning and growing. These mindsets and these characteristics have a huge influence on our ability to learn. And now we start to see why. Let's look at like the four key ingredients to growth. Effort, challenges, mistakes, and feedback. The research shows that when somebody is in a fixed mindset, they look at effort as a negative thing, as something that you do when you're not good enough. They also don't see the value or purpose of putting in effort. They've been shown to back down and avoid challenging situations. They get really discouraged and worked up when they make mistakes. And when somebody with a fixed mindset receives feedback from a parent, a teacher, a coach, or a friend, they get defensive, they take it personally, and they don't see the value or purpose of the feedback. So in other words, people with this fixed mindset actually avoid and shy away from these four key ingredients to growth. Dweck and her team have shown that when people enter a growth mindset, they look at effort as a useful thing, as an important part of the learning process. They're actually more likely to embrace challenges and persevere and work through them. They see mistakes as learning opportunities. And when they receive feedback, they actually appreciate it and use it. Now, the fascinating and important part of this table is to connect the dots between these key characteristics of the two mindsets and our actions and behaviors towards learning. Let's look at the fixed mindset side first. They actually shy away from putting in effort because they don't believe that they can change. They give up when they're met with a challenge and things get hard because they don't want to look bad. So in their mind, the challenge becomes a threat and because they don't believe that they can change. They hate making mistakes and are discouraged by mistakes because if you're making mistakes, you're not looking good. And they don't see the value or purpose of feedback because they don't believe in their capacity to grow. So in one way or the other, every single one of these actions is a byproduct of these characteristics. And the same is true on the growth mindset side. They see the value and purpose of effort because they believe in their capacity to grow. They're more likely to take on a challenge and persevere through it because they believe that they can grow and because they're focused on the opportunity to do that. So they frame a challenge as an opportunity to get better. And by focusing on the process and believing in their capacity to grow, they're more likely to understand how important mistakes are in this process. And when they receive feedback from a parent, teacher, coach, or friend, they're more receptive to this because their focus is on getting better and because they believe that that information can help them grow and they have the capacity to do so. Two key points with this table. First, you're not just one or the other. This is a spectrum. And in different times, on different days, in different situations, you might be in a growth, while other times you'll slip into a fix. But now that we understand how it works and we understand the characteristics, you can start to identify where you're at on the spectrum and, more specifically, the cause of that mindset. Is it our beliefs or is it our focus? 
Second, yes, these actions of learning are great, and they're definitely behaviors that we want, but we have to understand that they come from our mindsets. So to create a great culture for learning, it's about zooming in on beliefs and focus and creating a real growth mindset, which is one of the most important things we can do. All right. So there we go. Growth versus fixed mindset with a dash of lines. <laughs> so what did we what did we learn a little bit about this video? Talk to me. We actually learn that the people with fixed mindsets, they never think that learning something new that they don't know is useful. Whereas the people with growth mindset, they think that learning new things is good for them and they try developing it. And the uh, appreciation or the, the things that they, the people don't appreciate about their artwork, the people with growth mindset are not affected by it and they actually are grateful about it. They feel gratitude about it, that they are learning something and people are uh, appreciating or not appreciating and they are uh, getting to learn new things every day in their life. Whereas the people with fixed mindsets are totally opposite. They think totally opposite about it. And according to my knowledge, I think that people with fixed mindsets are they actually procrastinate a lot. They have that procrastinating, distracting monkey in them, which keeps on distracting them until there's a there, there's some kind of panic. But that it isn't important that there would always be a panic so that you start doing that particular thing. So people need to have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. Anyone agree or disagree? Agree. I would totally agree. agree. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And one thing that I liked about this video that in the end they talked about how this is like this is not black and white. It's a spectrum because like people could be like different in some things or the other. For example, like I could be having a fixed mindset in one particular activity, or ha and have a growth mindset in some of something something else. So that's great because people are fluid. Absolutely. But yeah, overall like growth that. mindset is the way to go. Absolutely. No, it makes a big difference because if you think about it, we can't stop, you know, constantly checking ourselves, you know, but we can at least be aware and see if we can modify and catch ourselves, right? The moments that we feel like we're going into a fixed mindset mode. So I hope that when you are going to see um, certain statements or things or actions and stuff like that, right? You're, you're seeing that, you know, you specifically are getting the opportunity to be able to catch yourself, if anything. So that way that if you're on the spectrum, you can say, oh, you know, Disha is gonna be like, nope, I'm not going there. I'm doing a fixed mindset and I don't want that right now. I'm, I'm trying to fix something or learn something or do something. And all these thoughts are coming into my head that's preventing me from growing or thinking that I can learn. And that's really what we really just have to be self-aware about. This is, you know, belief systems at the end of the day are about self-awareness and being able to help us guide our actions during the critical times that we particularly need, right? So, so the next video that we're going to show is going to be about the brain and how it is rewired and how we want to particularly, um, you know, learn something specifically and what our brain naturally does when we do it. And guys would request everyone, as, as Namish pointed out, please don't annotate on the screen. Uh, that'd be great. Thank you. We just have a last video for two minutes and then we'll get back to Dr. Solo. Thank you. Not so long ago, 
Many scientists believe that the brain did not change after childhood, that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. It is adaptable, like plastic. Hence, neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task, or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more, and this new way of thinking, feeling, or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. All right. Who had heard of neuroplasticity before today? I have. Yeah? In one of the courses I I've learned, learned about the brain. Yeah, so it's, it's Actually, a thing you guys are familiar with? I, yeah. I know a lot about the brain thing. Because in 2020, I've been into the brain thing a lot. I've stopped procrastinating in lockdown. Before lockdown, I procrastinated like, oh my God. I know, but hey. Yeah, I want to know why are we using the word plasticity here? Like new neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, right? It's about uh, the flexibility that uh, our brain has, right? And that's basically what we're specifically talking about is that our brains are super flexible, right? And they, uh, the neuro aspect or the synapses, right? That we create in our brains when we are developing a thought that turns into a habit, right? And so what we're really trying to do here is that basically the argument is, is that we can change the synapses that are happening with the new thoughts that we're entering the brain and that's creating a brand new route within our brain to be able to develop a new skill or a new habit. Yeah, so the point is, is that a lot of people think that they can't become creative, right? Maybe you were not good at drawing when you were a baby or, you know, riding a bicycle and all that stuff. And it's gone into your head because you didn't get external feedback from mom, dad, sister, brother, whatever, strangers that, oh, you know, Jisha, you're so good at this, right? You didn't get that external feedback. It may translate into your brain that you may not be creative because that is possible, right? We usually do things when we get some sort of external feedback. And that's why I'm saying that just because you didn't get it, right? It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist for you to rewire your brain. And then maybe as an adult, that's like me, like that's maybe when your talents flourish. It doesn't matter if it, I didn't, you know, flourish at, I don't know, 10 or 12 or something like that. But the so point about, is, is that never mindset. lose that belief. Go ahead. Yeah. All about the growth mindset. So you just never give up and think that you believe that you can do. Yeah, because there's got to be a reason why you're being attracted to something, if you think mm -hmm. about it, at the end of the day, right? If you like cars, if you like studying, if you like whatever, right? What is it 
that's really attracting you because it's got to be something within you, right? You know that expression, it takes one to know one? Yeah, exactly. That's, bas that's basically what we're talking about here. That means it cannot be outside of you. That means the seed or the synapsis, right? Absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Very well said. Thank you, Sanvi. So I think this is what is really being discussed here, guys, is that just because you can't see it right now doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But the only sign externally that we have right now is the mutual attraction that we have towards uh, some of our passion and hobbies. And we have to ask ourselves, why are we becoming interested? Because whether we want to or not, there is this wonderful book called Discover Your Strengths. And it's saying that during our teenage years, from four years old and onwards, right, we're developing all of these particular talents that naturally we are coming into the world with. And of course, because of our habits and our activities and practices, we're developing it. But the cool part is what will happen, especially by our early 20s, is that we will lose half of those synapses connections. And then we specialize naturally, biologically. Isn't that so cool how our body naturally does that, whether we're aware of it or not? Yeah. So the idea, right, is that you got to, you got to keep going because your body is already saying, look, Jisha likes, you know, this. And she, if she continues to develop it because of that external attraction that was the sign, right? Our cultures are all about signs. <laughs> and I'm giving you guys the sign of how to detect it. This is the sign. Because why would you not, why, then, then the argument is, then why are you not attracted to cars? Why are you not attracted to this, right? Like, what's the psycho, you know, the, the scientific reason for that? I or maybe you might be attracted to cars. It's just that even not you are not exposed to that kind of experience right now. Like if you just go deeper into that, you might get you know interested in cars, for example. I'm trying to see if I want to go into metaphysics right now. <laughs> so I'm going to say you're right. Exposure is a consideration. But just because you're not exposed to that particular thing in your life doesn't mean you're at a disadvantage. Because at the end of the day, life is all encompassing and it's going to show you the things that are, you were supposed to see. So we're just going to leave it to that. So don't feel like you're missing out. You're going to get exposed to the right things at the right time. Yeah. I wanted to say that I also had an experience. Uh, in, uh, I Like the bicycle one only actually the exact thing. Like uh, I, I was not able to ride a bicycle for a month, I guess the uh, without wheels one i was not able to ride it then I, I one time i just gave up my mom helped me and my best friend who lives nearby she helped me and she motivated me and the day my mom was not there only me and her was there and she was making me teach about how to cycle now and that day only i learned it like in just a minute and i was so like that we need to like we need to try hard if we want to accomplish something we cannot just leave it in the between or anything yeah i mean i'm telling you guys so let's let's do a little test of your skills um how about this one tell uh someone can raise their hand or shout it out is this a fixed or growth mindset statement i am not good at this It's a fixed I mean, it depends, like, at, at what point are you speaking this? So, like, for example, like, even if you have a growth mindset, you know, even after trying, like, a thousand times, you, like, there's a chance that you, you still are not good at, at something. That's not possible, because people with growth no. mindset think the, if they are doing something bad, they always think good about it. That means it's probably fixed mindset. But sometimes it's important to be practical also. Like, you cannot end, uh, waste your entire life on doing something which you are not able to do. Why? Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, it's, it's not about like being something good or bad. It's like it's just that being yeah. good at something. So like mastering something. It's like, like it, I it, it depends on person to uh, person. Like I'm, I I'll, I'll, I will not be great. Like, just think practically. Yeah. You waste your entire life in doing something. At the end of your life, you are not able to do this. Then what's the point? Okay, guys. Um, just just for you know logistical purposes, I'm going to step <laughs> in. Please. Uh, raise your hand and and then once you do that we'll come to you and and no uh, we're not really encouraging any cross questioning or cross answering uh so dr so good you could sort of take care of that well, it was a natural byproduct to this oh. particular question because it is you know i i can say maybe we're all correct right why because it all depends on the spectrum and the place and positioning of our lives where we're coming from so really is there a right or wrong answer and like one of our friends said it depends right and so let's think of this next one is this fixed or growth mindset when i make a mistake i will learn from it and get better this is a growth, growth, mindset. growth mindset it's a growth growth mindset yeah that that was kind of clear is this fixed or growth mindset? I will succeed if I put effort into it. Growth, uh, growth, growth mindset. Growth, yeah. It's a growth, growth, growth mindset. And then finally, maybe going back to our previous argument, is this a fixed or growth mindset? This is too hard. <laughs> It's basically a half yeah. statement. It's half a statement. Yeah, it could be yeah. fixed or growth. This is too hard, but I could do it. It's a growth <laughs> mindset. <laughs> Some people can be some seriously good lawyers here. It this is great. <laughs> it depends. Cause we can do it 75% fixed, but 30% growth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got some data. People no. too. <laughs> if you're very critical about your thoughts, you could have statements when you're being, you're critically analyzing something. You could have statements like, "I am not very good at this, but I will be." So it's ultimately it's all the spectrum. On it. Yeah, it's spectrum again. All right, all right. I still accept that answer. Absolutely. Yeah, things can become great too. But was All it right. so good? Was it uh, this is too hard? Is a fixed mindset, right? Just to well, end. actually, is it? Is it Nimesh? If you if you say <laughs> that it's too <laughs> because. All I can say is I'm open to perspectives if one can argue it appropriately, and I have to say the kids that showed up here today are, are arguing it appropriately. Okay. I mean, it depends on like, at what stage of life are you like saying exactly. that statement. Dep it depends on the condition in which you are. Like, yeah. yeah, the circumstances that's matter. Valid. That's valid. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, that brings uh, to one of my favorite games now. And at this point, guys, what we're going to do is to try to swap, uh, you know, um, Dr. Sogul is going to take two volunteers. Um, yes. Dr. Sogul, why don't you take away? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, the the brainy version of the presentation is over. So now we're going to do a little activity. Are you guys ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Okay. okay. So if some of you who may or may not have done improv, it's one of my favorite games as well. And so what we're going to do here specifically is I'm going to pick on random people. And so if you, especially if you haven't spoken until now, so get ready. And we're going to be the two first volunteers to go to the first round of what is called the Yes And Game. Yay! So let me take a look at your lovely names. Let's see what we have in store for you. So first runner up that I see here today is Ayushi. I'm seeing you, so you're gonna be our first volunteer. Uh, so let's see what what other people I have. Yeah, don't turn off your cameras just because I don't see you. I have you on chat too, so <laughs> don't think you can get away from me. Whoever is going to be the volunteer, I'll we'll put them on spotlight as well. But please make sure you turn on your camera. So Ayushi, please do that um, if you can. Yeah, Ayushi's already there. Yeah, he's there. Um, how about let's see what we're looking. How about Asmi? Asmi, come on up. Turn on that camera. All right. 
Perfect. All right. So let's take a look at the screen. Basically, what I'm trying to have you guys do is that um, Ayushi is going to say the first statement. And then the first statement is, we are going on vacation. And then Asmi is basically going to continue that statement by saying yes and, and then adding another statement. And then Ayushi is going to come back and also say yes and, and also add to that particular statement. And we're going to go back and forth with this yes and a few more times so that we can actually basically see how this conversation is going to evolve and we to what to it makes sense. Oh, yes, ma you have to make it up. That's the purpose of improv. Ma'am, that's quite ma tough. You repeat, could you repeat it again? I'm, I'm a little yeah. So the first person, which is you, Ayushi, you're going to say the first statement, which is, I want, we are going on vacation, right? You're going just going to say that. And then the second person, uh, which is Asmi, is going to say yes and, and then she's going to complete the statement and continue it. Then whatever she says, Ayushi, you're going to top it off with saying yes and da 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 da, right? And you guys are going to go back and forth topping it off to see how we develop this particular process. I promise it has a point. At the end of the day, this is not just a game. It's a point, a game with a point. So ultimately, Ayushi, take us away. Okay. Um, we are going on a vacation. Um, yes, and we are going to have a party out there. Uh, yes, and we're going to leave tomorrow for the Maldives. No, I mean, uh, I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm to... Uh, you have to say I'm yes and. Again. You gotta keep it, you gotta continue yes and. Okay, yes, and, uh, okay. I'll ho I hope to have a party. And we're hoping to bring a lot of friends. Oh, yes, and I'm very excited to visit the beaches there. Yes, and um, I was hoping for some loud music. That's all I got found. Oh, keep going. Oh. <laughs> I'm not having fun on this. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, um, yes, and I really want to try out the cuisine Oh, um, there. Yes, and uh, the food, I guess it will be very good and the lighting and stuff like that. Yes, and I can't forget to pack a swimsuit. <laughs> good job, guys. Round of applause for our volunteers here. <laughs> this is good. This is good. All right. So I need now two more volunteers to go to the next round here. So I'm looking at my participants and I'll explain the instructions. Can I have uh, Ritvika as one of our volunteers here today? Turn on your camera if you haven't already done so. And I haven't heard from, let's see, Sinu? Sinu, can you turn on your camera? Do we have Sinu in the house? It's been on deal. Okay, so you Okay, perfect. We got it. All right, so um, the first person. I still haven't heard from Sinu yet. Sinu. Oh no, Sinu's not there? Okay, let's try. Let's see. Uh, let's see what it was. How about Deep? Let's talk to Deep. Deep, where are you? <laughs> Deep was sleeping. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. So I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm pulling your leg. Um, okay. So Deep, I need you to say this first statement, uh, which is, I think <clears throat> there is a new park opening up. I think there is a new park opening up. Perfect. And then Ritsvika, you're going to say no but. And, and then Deep, you're going to continue that no but. And then extend the uh, conversation. Go ahead, Ritsvika. No but. No but. There is no equipment that, uh, for children under 15 years. 
No, but it's still good I'm for work. I'm a little bit nervous. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. No, no but there are not... here. Go ahead. No, no but no, there but... are. Yeah, yeah, continue. I. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Read speaker. Go ahead. No, but there are no gym equipments there too. No, but the park really doesn't need gym equipment. No, but there are also no no trees and uh, plants there too. No, but basically a park always has a tree and a plant. <laughs> Reach bigger, you can go out and slap them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more, nothing? <laughs> Ma'am, no, but the park is built on a, what does it mean by Shamshan? Oh, on a graveyard. Yeah. Graveyard. Graveyard. Graveyard, graveyard, yeah. It's no, graveyard. No, but I don't believe in all this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but it is far. It is too far. <laughs> no, but it's still okay. We could buy, a, we could use a cab. <laughs> No, but there is no money at all with me. No, but I have. <laughs> all right, round of applause, guys. <laughs> good really? job, good job. Really, Al? Really good cool. job, Reed Speaker. I see it wasn't that hard. You came up with ideas to argue against deep. <laughs> so, it. Oh, you're on mute, Reed Speaker. What are you saying? Mm, really All right, let's do another round because I think you guys are really good at this, but I want to solidify my point here. So let's look at, let's see, uh, where is my list here? Okay, let's take a look here. So Mishti, you're going to be number one yes. and uh, let's see, Adyasha. You have, uh, we're going to put number two. So Mishti, you're going to, there's like three different questions here. So I'm just going to pick one. How about this? I just made an app and, and Adyushi is going to say yes. And, and we're going to go from there back and forth. I just made an app. Yes. And I applaud your initiative. Yes, I'm, I'm grateful for the help you uh, provided. Yes, and I'm very proud of you for coming up with such an, such a genius idea. Yes, and I'm grateful for you, uh, grateful to have you by my side when I achieve this. <laughs> yes, and I have literally nothing to say against that. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> let's go to the next uh, one with our nose. Uh, let's see. So, how about this? Um, let's take a look at our volunteers here one more time. Where did everyone go off camera? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> so. Let's take a look. Where's my list? Ah, uh, there we go. Um, all right. So let's see. How about Yash? Is Yash in the house? And then we can take a look at, uh, let's see. We did Asmi. Did Asmi talk? No, no. Asmi didn't talk yes, yet. So, okay. Yes, you did? Okay. Um, let's see. What well, let's go Ananya? with Ananya. Yeah, or... go ahead. Yeah. Let's go with Tanish, Tanish and Yash. Yeah. All right. So is, is Yash there? Okay, perfect. So uh, for our, our first statement here, uh, Tanish, you can stop, uh, say, stop right there. You are not leaving this house dressed like that. Stop right there. You're not leaving the, this house dressed like that. All right, Yash, and you're going to say no, but. Okay. Nobody? 
I think we don't have Yash. We don't have Yash? Okay, uh, Yash. Ananya, can you, can you hear us? I, yes, I can. Okay, so why don't, Ananya, why don't you go with, with, with the thing? Tanish, could you start again and then Ananya would respond? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Stop right there. You're not leaving this house dressed like that. Can you start, Tanish? Yeah, yeah. I said stop right there. You're not leaving this house dressed like that. Hello, Kaiva. I'm wearing a killing dress tonight and you're asking me to stop. Nobody just cannot leave the, this bad house like that. I don't like that. We are late for a party and I think you should like, you should agree with okay, what I'm so, doing. Uh, uh, so I'm going to stop you there, um, Ananya. Uh, Anya, you, what you have to do is you have to start with a no and then begin your sentence, right? No, but. No, okay. but. But I was speaking against it, I, like, I was like, I told, I'm killing that dress and you just can't, you know, you just can't stop me. So that is like a no, that is being negative. No, you got to say it. You got to say the words. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. uh, Tanish, uh, last try. Let's give the third try. Tanish, why don't you start again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Stop right there. Third time, you're not leaving this house dressed like that. No, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna change again. I'm wearing, I'm already wearing a killing dress tonight. Uh, no, you're you're dressed in toilet paper. You cannot leave this house like that. Uh, I think I've dressed better than you, so. No, but no, but <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm dressed better than no, you. But no, but how can toilet paper be better than a t-shirt? Mm, no, I don't think, like, I don't think, I think it's Halloween and you can wear anything, so. Oh, that's the end of that statement. Thank you so much. <laughs> Man, Tanish, you're nice. <laughs> so, I, 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 I want to argue with you. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. No, but seriously, just to kind of think about the statements that you guys heard um, from each other and really give yourselves a round of applause for all the courage that it took to be able to speak in front of a bunch of strangers. So I'm really proud of you guys. Seriously, it's not easy, especially in these types of Zoom dynamics, let alone in person. So think about the statements that you guys heard between um, our different participants when the yes and came about, right? Versus the no but, right? Which one of you think had more of a positive connotation, a positive vibe to it? What was, what, you know, which one do you think had that type of positivity in it? Yes, the but. Yes, yes, yes ones. but. Yes, but <laughs> I love it. Um, yes, and right because it was whether you liked, you know, you wanted to or were conscious or not. You're supporting each other, even though you may not be in full agreement, but you're supporting each other in some shape or form by sh sharing all these particular topics with each other, right? But the no, but had like, wah, wah, like the conversation was just kind of going downhill and everything like that. So yes, ma'am. No, yeah. but it's too argumentative. Yeah, it just sounds <laughs> like you're fighting. Even if it was it's quite not like somebody it is would still make learning. <laughs> for a very good debate, it would make for a very good debate kind of thing, just discussing. Yeah. If it was well, very positive, though, not yeah. like, I mean, not that both parties are at ease with each other and nobody's affected too much by the negative continuations, I guess. Uh, then it's I think really it's easy to think of a yes and statement rather than a no but. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it makes us more, more positive. It makes a difference. So think of this now, guys, when you're talking to your friends, family, and even strangers about when you're coming up with ideas in the creative process. Do you see how much language plays a part here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're more supportive, you can get more ideas out of people. So being supportive is like key for brainstorming, I think. So do you, do you have something to say? Please go on. No, I didn't. I okay. the mic is... your, your hand was raised. Okay, <laughs> no problem. 
Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be the most really interesting skill to catch yourself every time you're talking to your friend or something. I still do it. I was like, oh no. And you know, see, I'm totally putting some negative vibes out with the way that I'm talking to my friend or my colleague or my boss or whoever, my mom, my dad and all that stuff, because I keep on saying no, 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 you know, but I'm not, I'm not thinking, right? Just to say like, how do I support? How, how would I be able to still, you know, show support, but still maybe offer alternative viewpoints, you know, as we're thinking about stuff or ideas or decisions or whatever the situation is at hand, right? So think about these types of simple phrases that we just talked about. So that way that in the process of uh, creativity, when you guys are thinking about your next best ideas to implement with value, you are going to be able to also support each other because that's basically the whole expression of, right, two, two brains are better than one, two minds are better than one. This is how it, it evolves. This is how it, it really helps out to be able to do that. So I'm going to ask uh, to go to the next uh, particular opportunity and I'm going to explain the exercise real quick and then we're going to do, uh, go into our breakout sessions. But Dr. as Sultan, one of our, yes, go ahead. I was actually uh, thinking for this um, piece as well, it would be much more fun if we could actually just similar to the last activity, just take in volunteers um, and do like two rounds. And, and then of course, um, hope that these students go back and, and do that with their best friends and, and you know, share your ideas. So okay. I think it'll be more interactive rather than break our room. So we can choose, um, you know, four volunteers or six volunteers and, and do two or three rounds of this together. I think it'll be more fun. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Um, so am I picking two students? Y yes, you are. Okay, perfect. So I will explain the details here since we're all going to be in one happy room. So one of the last particular exercises that I really want you guys to think about, because sometimes it's hard for people when they tell me like, I don't know how to come up with really good ideas, right? And let alone start a business out of it, you know, potentially, right? It's not, it's not easy. Well, today is your great new day that you're going to learn this skill and we're going to all benefit from it. So I'm going to pick out two volunteers specifically, and in the first minute, each volunteer is going to share what they're passionate about. So I'm going to give you an example in just a minute, but ultimately the first person is going to share, the second person is going to share, and then you guys are going to brainstorm on how you can combine your passions to create a business together right now in the third minute. And then you guys are going to have to pitch it on the spot spontaneously. Woo! It's not hard. It's but it is a, you know it takes your mind to think about it because you're trying to combine. You're, what we're doing is we're practicing the idea of synergy and finding connections between things that didn't exist before until a minute ago, right? And so this is gonna really help with the creativity process and ideation. And I really want you guys to, like Hemish said, to practice it with your friends because the more you do it, the more you'll get better at it, right? So just to kind of give you an example for uh, some folks here that want the example. So student one says, I love dancing. And student two says, I love computers. And so they brainstorm for just a second. And then their pitch comes out to be, we have created the first smart dance studio where the floor will teach you the moves and let you know if you're moving correctly or not, right? That's going to be the business idea that they're going to come up with to be able to figure out if this is specifically something that they're interested in, right? Um, oh, <laughs> no problem. Um, and so we specifically will get that opportunity to um, really help understand each other. So just to kind of get the party started here, because I probably, I'm already intimidating a lot of you, <laughs> but it, my promise is gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Uh, let's take a look at our chat room. All right, let's, let's take a look. Um, okay, so if I can have Jisha 
And I think who else we haven't seen today? Let's see. How about Swayam? Swayam and Jisha. Okay, you guys are going to take a first minute and uh, starting with Jisha, and you're going to share a couple of hobbies you're passionate about. And then we'll go to the second minute. Go ahead, Jisha. I love it, doing anything from which we can learn something new. Which no, this I is your passions. About the... Yeah, these are your passions, the things that you're already yeah. doing. So what are you passionate about? And uh, I, I am really passionate about making an app which helps in reducing the pollution of the whole world. All right, pollution apps. All right, yeah. so I am, your turn. What are you passionate about? Come on, you were there in a minute ago. <laughs> you can't come out, come out wherever you are. <laughs> come on, this is going to be fun, I promise. Blam, can you hear us? All right, let's, for the sake of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, my, my, my job is done. <laughs> All right, let's see who else. Swayam, okay, Swayam, you're on mute. Take yourself off of mute. mute. Almost there. There you go. Yes, so right. I'm, I'm passionate about um, doing MU events and debates. I love okay. them. I do them. I do them a lot. Quite recent and now it's happening online. So it's more of fun. And apart from, apart from that, I... I love skating. I do skating a lot and skating you can do at your home and I have a terrace also. It's a terrace home. So it's, I can do it in my terrace also. So skating, I love it. Uh, I love doing skating. All and right, let's yes, stop there. From... So skating and political debates, Jisha, you're loving, hey. de you're loving apps. So you I guys now have to think about. Me too. Even I love debates. I actually am really good in debate and I actually do have two brainstorming ideas. All right, or let's any. do it. Let's, let's talk to Swayam about it. What could be combining these passions together to create your new business? Actually, uh, can I tell my idea? Well, you're talking to Swayam. You're brainstorming right now. So you're talk to him. So it's like, I want to reduce the pollution and you like debating. So we can make a platform in which uh, people means people can debate with each other on pollution, which can make people believe and motivate them to stop polluting the country. So it would be a platform which will help the uh, changing the whole world and the future of the whole, all the people living in this beautiful world by making more beautiful by stop polluting by making a platform in which we can debate on uh, debate with people who don't believe in reducing pollution or are or to think they are helpless to it and you can make them believe and motivate them so i am how about you do you like that idea business idea um yes i i, I love it it's it's nice it's good. all right so uh, let's let's see how you're gonna pitch it to us. How would you sell it to can me? Can I also? Sh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like my own idea. Yes, my go own ahead. Idea. Yes. Yeah, so, um, my uh, one idea is that um, the it's a problem that I was facing these days. Um, that was that uh, like uh, the Jisha so uh, told that she's uh, interested in making app. So I, I thought of making an app where, uh, you know, we almost write uh, everything about MUNs and we teach people about MUNs and debates because it's not happening like about uh, people who are new to the committee. They are uh, almost they waste their first committee and first year, first MUN experience because there are a lot of people who just try to win and win and they uh, exploit the people who are first MUN. So I want to actually teach them uh, so, sort of through an app, through technology and also list like all the MUNs that are available and that are going around in India. Because I want, why I want to do that is because um, 
just because I I could not at attend the Harvard M U N because of this because I just didn't uh, know about it. Harvard M U N I just couldn't attend because I didn't know about it. And like many friends, they were like skeptical. Like if I would have attended that, then I would have won. So they were like they didn't tell me mm -hmm. because they were like I want to win. I want to win. So there's a business where through app we can tell that these all M U N S are conducted across the countries. And you can join these. And apart from that, we can have additional features where we teach them. All right, them. one we minute is done. One minute is done. Resolution. I told you guys, it's yes, only yes. three minutes that you're sharing these particular ideas. But that was a good first round that we're connecting the app to also teach debate as well as solve pollution and climate. So give themselves a round of applause. That's going to be the first round. I'm going to select two other and students. Dr. So well, I, came up, I, yes. came up with an idea. I came up with an idea that probably Swayam and Jisha could, uh, you know, that they could actually talk about pollution at the MUNs um, and make that the main core, core policy topic, right? And, and I think that would get people to really talk about it, uh, debate about it, and then of course come and, and propose solutions about it. So um yeah that was just my two cents <laughs> there you go right that's more synergy even i have two here. cents about this yeah like, go ahead in addition to this so like if you're making an app about you know listing immunes so we list each and every immune that people are organizing so what we can do is as a business standpoint we can ask the people who are organizing the immunes in order to list your immune in our app you have to donate some for like some percentage of your like uh, revenue to an NGO which is working to uh, to combat climate change and pollution. So, so by that you are solving both the problems. Very cool. There you go. Uh, so there you I go. also have an idea. Like we can uh, like uh, Jisha can make, make an app which would connect those who want solutions and those who provide solutions, and through that connection they could reduce the pollution. So a more of an interactive chat feature. Perhaps, yes, exactly. To be able exactly. To, uh, Okay. Yeah, to be able to add on to that feature. Jisha, I mean, Swayam, I think you got something going on there. You may need to touch base later on and figure out if this is a reality that can be happening. A lot of people like this idea. So look at all the feedback that you guys are getting. All right, round two. Yes, go ahead. I was just saying that it's so interesting that two simple passions can have so many business ideas to it. Like, Everybody I'm telling you, this is a magical exercise. Nobody believes me until now. So, all right, let's see. How about Prisha? You haven't spoken in quite a while. Let's do this. Um, and then let's see, who else? Who just... We can, we can get Ayush. Sorry. In. Ayush? Yeah, go ahead. So you guys, uh, passion, share your passions for a minute between each other. Go ahead. Uh, I should start first. Yes, please. I love graphic designing as well as I love psychology a lot. Psychology and graphic designing. So like I can combine both of them, psychology and graphic designing. Because in graphic designing, we can use the psychology to make the symbols in, in su such a way that they can attract the people and the psychology can be used for that as well. All right, Ayush, how about that? What's your passion? I love astronomy, artificial intelligence, and robots. So we can build robots to create a society for humans outside the Earth. All right, combine time. How are you going to combine these two passions together? So maybe we can use the psychology uh, in the robots to make them more realistic or something. Maybe if that's possible, like how to we can compare the human brain psychology which are applied in human and remember guys you're creating a product or service so what is the service or product that you're producing to the society we can use the graphics for making the robot so it's the a it's a graphic design company for the robot no, for making the, he's telling about making a robot that goes so we can make it more attractive and, you know, more delightful by making it graphically more attractive and stuff. We also have to figure out how the robots are going to solve a problem in the society and how. Yeah, remember, it was idea yeah, plus value. 
Yeah. yeah, and the uh, robot can be uh, having the you know the he can understand feelings and can help the people who are going through depression and stuffs like the stress stuffs and we, uh, we can you know make him study about the psychological uh, stuff that goes on in the human brain and the robot itself can help the person to go get out of the depression and stress that they are going through. Ayush, do you agree or something new? I'm I have something new. Okay. Uh, we can send robots to insta, uh, interstellar space instead of humans to uh, many light years away from Earth. And uh, we can use graphics uh, to represent our Earth uh, through uh, exoplanet uh, aliens uh, and find exoplanets that have life so we can take help of NASA for sending our robots. Come on, Bisha. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bisha, to go ahead, tell me how, how would you add on to that? Like, um, it's not bad, it's really good. Maybe we can use the robot for both the things. Like, we can make two different robots one for humans and one for going in outer space. <laughs> All right. Maybe. Or the one robot can do both the things. So, you can buy, if you want for psychology, you can buy the same robot. And if you want to send him to any other space, then also you can use the same robot. All right, we're going to open it up to the audience. How attractive is this? I think it would be a good idea. Yeah, that's that's a really good idea. But like, I yeah. also have another one. So Ayush talked about that he's into artificial intelligence, you know, making complex applications. And Prisha likes psychology and graphic designing. So what we can do is we, uh, you can make a service which uses, you know, proper application uh, for pro proper artificial intelligence and complex programs to create digital images of, uh, of like a, of an app, of an abstract thing. For example, like during presentations, people always tend to, you know, uh, to visualize something through images or some video. So it's always better to have uh, or an image instead of uh, like a sentences or words. So people are people can wrap their heads around um, complex things. Painting of something. I like it more than my idea now. Yeah, you can just you can I type a word. Like to add and uh, the art the app can make images of that uh, that other complex thing so that it's easier to people to understand. I would like I to guess. add on to Tanish. Uh, I thought of an advertising agency where you instead of using yeah. human humans and using the psychology of humans you could rather use ai have uh, you could have ai use the psychology to produce graphic designs as an advertising agency so since it's not very you're not using human labor you're sort of cutting down the human labor it it's going to make you a lot of profit that way so yeah you're more effective just over there. there you go. All right, yeah. let's go for one more group. If uh, if Rishi agrees, we can do one more group. Uh, I think we're we're running out of time, but we're running out of time. All right, let's then wrap up here in our next slide. But give yourselves a round of applause. That's basically you coming up with business ideas in three minutes, ladies and gentlemen. See, it was not that hard. It's just a matter of finding a starting point. And today what you've learned is that your starting point are your passions and that's as simple as it gets. So let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, I need uh, different people to tell me all the different things that we've learned today, starting from the top left. So, you know, let's just, Mishti, go ahead and say the first one. What's, what's the first thing that you resonated with today? Uh, probably the mindset of uh, the mind, the different mindsets. I kind of find versus fixed, fixed mindset. So wonderful. How about uh, deep? What what did you resonate with today? Uh, today I really love that uh, how you like the last exercise. Like uh, we came up with an ideas in like three minutes. So like it's all a matter of starting point. Once you get the starting point, the way is yours. Like. So I really learned how to get a starting point and how to grow your ideas and how to work on your ideas. Absolutely. Adyasha, how about you? Um, the workshop is called Connect the Dots and the last exercise ultimately connected all the dots that we've learned about. 
And the funny thing is that I used to do this on my own uh, at times. Like I would come up for business ideas, the craziest of stuff, even if I didn't have the qualifications enough to do them. And I thought it was a silly practical idea that I used to dream up in my free time. But now that we've done this activity, I kind of realized that the simplest ideas are the most important ones. So creativity is simple. It doesn't have to be complicated as everyone makes it. So ultimately, I think that's what I took from this workshop. Perfect. Ayushi, how about you? I think I I I think this is something a lot of people go through. It's like when you're you you know given a problem you have to work on, you tend to doubt your own abilities, and that's something a lot of people struggle with. So what I learned was that to be creative, you have to believe yourself that you are creative, and that once you are in that frame of mind, you can easily uh, start with whatever you want to start with, and it makes the whole process a lot easier to work towards. Did I help you debunk some myths and misconceptions today? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I mean, because I've read, I've, I, I, ha I did read, I started reading this book called Thinker Toys, and it, it's about creative thinking. And I mean, I read it, I finished it, but I was never able to really put into practice what I read, and that, and like this whole workshop really helped me, you know, I, you know, resonate, um, draw comparisons between what I read and you know what you talked about, and I think that really helped me put things into perspective. Wonderful. Jisha, how about you? Actually, I learned a lot uh, in this whole meeting that we did. There's like a lot of things, but what it helped me is in believing in myself because I sometimes do have problems in believing in myself. So it's yeah, hard, but so it's hard, but today I realize it's not that hard to believe because I learned many things, but this was the main thing I learned. I could talk for hours and hours on what we learned today. And you were not even supposed to be here. Look how, look at this. <laughs> you yeah. just happened to be here. This is awesome. How about, let's see, who else? Um, Tanish, go ahead. Tell me what you learned today. Yeah, the most important thing that I found out, found out today was that communication is key when you're discussing ideas. So like. I found that being supportive and, you know, you know, adding on to things rather than, you know, destroying them or removing the ideas, it actually helps you to brainstorm stuff more and come up with cool solutions to problems and come up with business ideas. So I think that was the most like mind blowing thing that I learned today. Yeah. And overall about, you know, getting to know that creativity is can be visible in different, in a lot of ways. So it's not always about being artistic. It can, it can come up in every single field that we are working towards or like we are studying. So I think if you give your best in a particular thing, if you're passionate about it, you can be creative at it, no matter like what the field is, what, what, what the field is about and what the discipline is like. Absolutely. I'm going to open it up to the floor. Go ahead. Can I add something to what Tanish said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, you talked about teamwork and the word team says together, everybody achieves more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. We're and starting to like see to a lot add... that collaboration is, is one of the main competitive advantages if an organization has that. So it's, you know, I know it has been instilled in us, unfortunately, in society that competition is the way to go, but I'm sorry to burst your bubble today. It's collaboration that is going to get you farther in life. And I hope that you guys take this to heart. Um, any other last minutes before we I end? Would like to, I would like to add one thing. Like, uh, never resist yourself from putting efforts. Because if you don't put efforts, there is nothing to achieve. Like, always keep putting efforts and trying. And extending your limits. Uh, coming out of your comfort zone. And doing something that, which might might resist you from within, but it will definitely lead to you uh, great success. And just to kind of add that uh, deep, my mentor said to me, what you are looking for is also looking for you. Absolutely. And one more thing, whatever yes, you give to the world, the world will follow you.
think you got to repeat that again. You, uh, the internet was a little swappy. Okay. I was just saying that whatever you give to the world, the world would return it back to you. All right, that's that. I, you better that, believe that. That Absolutely. is actually that is actually known as the law of attraction. There you go. Absolutely. No, this is great, guys. I'm talking to a, a really smart group of people. I'm humbled by all of your existing knowledge, you know, but I, I am so grateful. I am so happy that I got the opportunity to spend Halloween with you guys. I mean, baby Yoda was really smart, don't you think? He taught us a lot today and yeah. tonight. And um, I want to thank the Big Red Group for the opportunity to facilitate. I apologize for extending our evening a little bit longer than expected, but I had so much fun. I couldn't have thought about it any other way. We, we had so much fun too. <laughs> and dude, we got to learn so yeah. many new things that yeah. we could not have if we didn't attend this workshop. And, and thank you, to you to that you, you wake awesome. up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I wake Absolutely. up this way. I just wake up this okay. way. So in lockdown, it's, it's really, all good. <laughs> it's really tough in lockdown to wake up early, right? I, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know, but you guys like did up. such a good job. Okay, on that note, guys, any last takeaways? We'd love to hear more. If anyone has uh, any more comments, any takeaway from today's work you would like to share before we um, close this down? Anyone else? Uh, in the, Rishi, you're in breaking. Yeah, and what, what do you guys want, you know, you think guys... about doing after you've learned all this knowledge? Any inspirations? Learn more things without stopping. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you yeah. need to get yeah. out of some, Like, keep thinking something new. Uh, I had a personal question. And for not you to well. underestimate your own ideas that this must be wrong. This must be not be possible because everything is possible you, till you think it like basically yeah, don't build perceptions true. about something yeah so i wanted to ask like how are you affiliated with asu so like are you working in a department or something yeah yeah absolutely uh so tanish i work for uh the business school um it's called thunderbird school of global management and um i personally have um led a team of recruiters who help study inside the united states uh, for their master degree programs in international business uh, but alongside my studies i've uh, studied you know, my doctorate, my master's, all that stuff uh, by working and studying together at the same time uh, to get to this level simply because I felt that we collectively as the world have more potential to do better training in uh, creative, creative leadership. And um, it was just through my experiences that I just decided, yes, I have a job but that's not going to stop me to really go forward for my passion to help people like you today to understand all the mistakes and incorrect lessons that I've learned from society and how we can reshape the future of leaders by instilling the correct ideas that will help you develop and grow to the best version of yourself. Right. And so, I recommend that to all of you guys is that, yeah, you may have a job that's going to pay the bills, but then you're going to potentially have a job that's really going to really get you to that next level of what uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs talks about self-actualization, because we're all getting to a point where in society, especially your generation, we all have to be more purpose driven. And so that's kind of where I kind of wanted to be the example and do what I do right now. So I'm helping people get masters, but at the same time, I'm helping become better leaders and in creative leadership as well.